recording. And um, with that, like I said, today's uh, webcast will be in conjunction with Logicalis, who's uh, been a long time uh, partner of IFS. And we have uh, several people that are here uh, that will be talking about this, but you know, the types of projects that we're talking about are those various um, automation projects, you know, commonly they're around the area of asset monitoring, you know, using different types of integrations to, you know, supervisory control and data acquisition systems, commonly referred to as SCADA or public uh, or pro programmable logic controllers, you know, commonly referred to as PLCs or direct to various equipment. Like you may have scales throughout your operation where you're measuring weights and you wanna automatically put that into the system. You've got conveyors and you wanna put you know, eyes on them or barcode readers or various sensors so you can relieve inventory as it passes a account point. Um, air handling to make sure you've got your air quality um, you know, under control. Various robots, whether it's a welding or a painting robot or a material movement robot. Uh, you're, you're really looking to improve operations. You don't always have to have these interfaced IFS. Um, but you know, sometimes you will want to interface some IFS and have it create work orders, you know, for repairs. Uh, those work orders could re include material requirements based on, you know, what the um, observations are that you're getting out of these systems. You can adjust the preventive maintenance schedule. You can track overall equipment effectiveness. Uh, you can even adjust production schedules based on information that you're getting off of those assets that you're monitoring in real time. Uh, and we're going to be talking about these today. Um, Logicalis has done several of these types of projects, and they've got some examples they'll be going through. Uh, some are even just tracking assets. So, you know, using GPS or RFID to keep track of, you know, uh, robot locations, forklifts. Uh, maybe you have a specific quality testing device that's very expensive and you want to find out where it is in a, in a yard or a plant. Um, various tooling that you might want to, you know, have stored, you know, in some kind of a location where you want to be able to find that. Uh, tracking inventory, um, you know, as in material movements for Kanban supermarkets or vendor manage inventory that's out on your on your floors. And then, of course, you know, some inspection um, requirements that you can automate. There's lots of uh, vision systems out there. Some of you have vision systems and are using them uh, but you know, maybe you want to continue to advance that and, you know, as you could potentially get more value out of it to have that feed information into a, a system like IFS. Uh, so we'll be going through uh, all of those today. Uh, so today we're going to be focusing on what's inside the yellow box. So you will hear the IFS IoT business connector. This is the way we, you know, bring information from all these devices uh, together so that we can actually, you know, act on it. So uh, Logicalis will be kind of going through for the most part everything they can do around the you know the hard work which is you know how do we acquire the information from the various devices and assets. Uh, how do we communicate that to get it somewhere where you can act on it. Uh, that can either be in the Azure um, uh, IoT area or it can even be on a third party like a Rockwell or a Siemens or um, you know, some of the other systems that are out there, Wonderware, et cetera. So with that, um, just mention a few words here about our partnership with Logicalis. Uh, you know, IFS, like I said, has been partnered with Logicalis for about 20 years, um, and we do do uh, quite a bit of work with them. But uh, this particular um, informational webcast is focused on, you know, their area uh, here. And with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Sandy Schutte uh, from Logicalis to kind of uh, give a little bit of a background and, and get us move forward. Sandy? Thank you, Bob, and um, good morning, everyone. Um, coming to you, I uh, hope you're all staying safe as well as healthy during uh, our new normal times. Um, Logicalis has as Bob mentioned, really been focused over several years in partnership with IFS. And, you know, we um, have deep ex expertise and experience in how to evaluate how to better optimize an IoT offering and solution perhaps you have already in place today, but maybe it's uh, not optimal. 
in how it is uh, working. Um, you know, we've got a, a large practice around Microsoft Azure and uh, provide solution implementation and support uh, for the IoT efforts. Um, one of the key things is is how you get data, you know, from the collection point of uh, whether it be extracting and video or uh, scanning or sensor, but how that data is used to better formulate analytics and uh, data that can be relevant to the business. So. Um, we, we tend to look all encompassing from the sensor connectivity all the way through to the output and how that data is used and where it's stored and the, the best ways for access and optimizing it. Um, corporately, uh, Logicalis, if you look at who we are uh, from a corporate perspective, is um, Logicalis US is part of uh, a global organization. We're uh, 1.7 billion in terms of our revenue and our global, uh, similar to many of your operations, uh, being a global footprint with uh, manufacturing or plant operations all over the world. We are in Europe, North America, LATAM, uh, Asia PAC, as well as Africa, and uh, have 6,000 employees that are uh, solution providers as well as business consultants that can help uh, work through um, initiatives around IoT. We're part of a larger organization, Data Tech, that's traded on the South African Stock Exchange. So I have about 10,000 corporate and public sector, uh, state and local government education clients. And um, you know, so building into our expertise in areas, um, we've spent a lot of effort around um, building and improving in the, the manufacturing processes. If you look at there's three focus areas, um, and that would be on the next slide that we uh, tend to focus on, that I uh, would like to introduce um, one of my uh, service principals and counterparts who will begin speaking about how we're focused in accelerating that transformation on the, the digital highway in uh, certain practice areas. So with that, uh, Michael Streisick, if I could ask you to uh, take the ball and, and further discuss our capabilities. And good morning and afternoon. This is uh, Michael Streisick with Logicalis. Uh, I actually looked af I look after our services uh, business for Logicalis uh, within North America. And uh, from a, a service perspective, uh, we really focus in on, on two, two areas. Uh, first and foremost, we are a solution provider where we work with our clients to envision, plan, design, you know, source the hardware, software, and uh, implement solutions on behalf of our, our client base. Uh, we are also a, a service provider in that we have been in the remote monitoring and managed services business for the last 20 years and you know have a number of uh, um, partnerships with third-party public cloud providers as well as being a, a public cloud provider uh, ourselves and if you look at how we break things out from an organization perspective um, you know first is, is a security practice you know whether it be security consulting for risk and controls or Technology, security, design, you know, implementation, and managed services, we have it all, all covered from a security perspective. Um, in the cloud world, you know, this includes both the third-party public cloud providers that exist out there, as well as hybrid cloud, hybrid cloud approaches you know, for clients that have their own uh, data centers and infrastructures that they own and maintain as well. So we have the capability to um, you know, envision, plan, design, implement, manage these environments for our clients. And then the last one, which is our IoT analytics practice, which you know we're going to hone in on on today. You know what makes us unique in this space is you know we don't necessarily have a hammer out looking for a nail. Uh, we're looking to consult with our clients, you know, better understand your needs and fit you with the right solution to solve that uh, particular challenge or objective that you might uh, that you might have. So Bob, if you could advance to the next slide for me. There we go. 
With uh, IoT constantly in the news today, and almost at every trade show that we uh, we typically go to, you know, companies want to know uh, what IoT can do for their specific business. So, you know, what organizations typically want to know is, you know, what specific benefits, you know, can IoT really deliver? Uh, can it help me save money and help me generate more revenue? Um, you know, how might it help me be more competitive in the market? You know, how hard is it to implement? How expensive is it? You know, how long will it take? Um, how do we even get started? I know many firms that we talk to uh, find this to be a daunting task and say that they don't necessarily have the skill set in-house to architect and implement uh, an IoT solution and, and wonder if they might need to, to hire more staff. Uh, next slide for me, Bill. Now we know that IoT solutions can help you, you know, lower service costs, improve business process, and reduce security risk. And we've actually seen this accomplished by, you know, avoiding unexpected system downtime, you know, disruptions by automatically collecting and analyzing data to find machine faults uh, or failures before they even happen. Um, you know, reducing unnecessary maintenance by only servicing the assets, uh, you know, when they when they are needed, um, which should lower service costs and as well as personnel health and safety costs, um, you know, decreased spare part inventory, uh, you know, ordering only what's needed and, and, and actually when it's needed. Uh, next slide for me, Bob. Uh, almost every business leader I speak with these days uh, is looking to explore and leverage, you know, this new technology to help identify new revenue stream sources. Uh, they're looking to quickly monetize these new capabilities by offering improved service levels and delivering new business models to market. You know, they're looking to drive increased sales by improving customer satisfaction, um, offer new maintenance services, you know, based on some of the IoT data flows, and ultimately provide, you know, new as-a-service offerings to complement some of the existing product offerings that may already exist inside your portfolio. Um, and, and lastly, you know, help you differentiate from your competition by offering some of the product services and service levels that they don't necessarily have in place today. Uh, next slide for me, Bob. Uh, you know, we know it's absolutely critical to get fast time to value and shortening the time from ideas to realize benefits. So, you know, the Logic House IoT practice brings a consultative approach to the table uh, to help you really get from A to Z. Uh, we have vast industry knowledge and expertise in order to quickly get your specific solution to market. And um, Bob, if you could advance to the next slide. Uh, in terms of today's conversation, you know, we really have three areas that we want to, uh, to hone in on. Uh, those being the asset monitoring, track and trace, and you know, analytics for production quality. And one of the subject matter experts that we've uh, brought here today uh, is a gentleman by the name of Bill Evans. And uh, Bill has a, a vast experience in the IoT arena and uh, one of the leaders in the space for Logicalis. So Bill, without further ado, I'll turn things over to you. Thank you, Michael, really appreciate that. And uh, as Michael mentioned, there are no shortage of use cases and options when it comes to how to leverage IoT or what role IoT plays in modernization. Uh, but there's a, a real specific reason why we focused on these three areas. Uh, one, they're important places for our customers to start and organizations to start. Uh, and they also have significant impact on the bottom line areas that Michael touched on, whether it is uh, introducing something that extends an improved experience for your end customers, something that will reduce costs and increase operational efficiency, and then also enhance existing or open new consumption models or revenue models or revenue streams as well. And, and that last one is uh, can sound like something that can be rather challenging to do, but we'll talk a little bit through uh, how that's possible. So again, we'll focus on these three use case areas. Uh, there certainly are many others, and sometimes it can be easy to focus on the very exciting, what we would call the shiny ball use case that might seem like the most exciting one to solve, but oftentimes those really need foundational things to get to them, uh, and, and there are things that can be done in a much 
shorter time frame that deliver quick results and can help build a solid foundation for modernization. And, and we'll talk a bit through that. We can go to the next slide, please. So one of the biggest challenges, and we touched on this a little bit earlier too, is where to get started or, and even around the complexity of IoT and, and really what do we mean when we're talking about the term IoT and really in the context of, of this conversation, it is uh, the definition we would give IoT is a means of leveraging technology as a part of modernization or digital transformation um, if, of industrial or, or manufacturing and supply chain environments. And IoT really is a part of that. It's not it in entirety. Uh, when we look at a great example of combining uh, what Logic House can bring from an IoT standpoint and what IFS brings, uh, combining those two can, can provide the complete picture when it comes to modernization or transformation. But IoT on its own is not going to solve that problem if we just take a look at just the IoT technology pieces itself. It needs to be part of something bigger, part of something more. And we'll talk about that as well. But just going back to the complexity piece for a moment, it can easily become daunting and overwhelming as Michael touched on before with the wide range of different platforms and products and technologies. And the way that we help customers simplify that is really in two areas. The first is on the right of this visual, which is how do we break down IoT? And we start with things. Those are the things that are going to generate data or provide us information that we uh, likely did not have in the past. How do we connect those things? There's a, a wide range of connectivity mechanisms that can be used, but those are appropriate to the thing that we're selecting. And then what's the platform to extract the value out of that thing? And those platforms can be uh, operational platforms like data historians that you may already have in use, they could be MES systems. Um, they could be the IFS uh, platform and applications as well. When we take all of that and we've now extracted the data, the value um, source ultimately, what do we then do with that? And that's where the far left comes into play here of continuing to modernize that IoT data. And then how do we manage it, uh, especially if we have multiple sources? How do we visualize that data appropriately? And that's different by each use case. And then the, the, the longer term goal of how do we either automate or apply artificial intelligence to that data? So if we look at this from the top right, swinging all the way around, uh, we can see that journey of connecting the thing to how we continue to gain insights and value out of it as we make our way around clockwise. We can move to the next slide, please. So what we wanted to do was touch on those three areas we talked about from a use case standpoint and how we can turn those use cases into action. And that first use case of asset monitoring, Logic House has a solution we call industrial asset monitoring. And ultimately the goal of this solution is to gain visibility in areas that typically were not available in the past. And we're not so much talking about new technology as much as we're talking about new ways of using technology that we haven't in the past because of cost, because of other challenges that are presented with the technology that do not exist at this time, and we're now able to leverage it in a greater capacity. So when we think about the wide range of assets that exist in your environments, uh, some of them may be what we would call partially connected, meaning there is data being extracted, but that data maintains in a siloed system. Or if we're talking about assets that have no connectivity at all today and are ripe for modernizing and extracting data from them. And we'll talk a bit about all the, the benefits of that. Just a couple here that you'll see are uh, insight into operations at a per line or per device or per asset level. There's ways to increase uptime and optimization based on that visibility. And we'll talk through a, a real world example here of what components we're talking about in the solution. And just at a high level, they are sensors, connectivity, a platform to 
collect and aggregate the data, and then an exist integration with uh, IFS, where we could then extract further value from a business process standpoint. Next slide, please. So this is a, a real world example, and we feel this is really important because we can candidly uh, sit here and share with you a lot of great possibilities and ideas of what could be um, and really start thinking about use cases and talking about the potential of what's possible or the art of the possible as it's often referred to. But we find it's a lot more valuable to share with you uh, what truly can be accomplished based on what has been accomplished. And we have a, a global food and beverage distribution organization that's one of the largest privately held companies in the United States that uh, had a challenge with bottle processing. You can see the image here um, in a beverage processing plant dealing with a wide range of different beverages and really different flavors is ultimately what they refer to them as. And what's interesting is this was not a grassroots IoT project in the sense that the customer was already collecting data. The challenge is the data they were collecting was not fully being utilized and it was being stored in a legacy platform that they couldn't utilize properly to extract the value that they were looking for. So when the Logic House team became engaged, one of the first things that we did was better understand how this process works. And there were things like liquid temperature throughout different stages in the process, uh, how the uh, process is completed with filling the bottles using uh, a gamma ray fill level inspection mechanism. And also that we were dealing with about 12 different flavors of beverages that all had different chemical makeups and characteristics. So as we went through that process, this was again, not about collecting the data. The data was already collected. It was extracting value from the data. And we were able to accomplish that using a modern data platform uh, that consisted of Microsoft Cloud, as well as some purpose-built software that is focused on automating the AI and, and essentially data science pieces to extract the value out of that data. And the end result was identifying one particular flavor amongst those dozen or more flavors that was the challenge area and focusing in on how to manipulate the temperature of the liquid and other elements of the, the chemical compound process that in the end allowed us to deliver some really powerful results. That data was then fed back into the manufacturing process and manipulated that particular makeup and, and formula for that one flavor, which in the end resulted in a 50% reduction in waste, in waste of the of the beverage liquid, which equaled $200,000 in savings per plant. Um, and that also gave them a base platform to extend into other areas for things like data visualization and AI. So this is a, a really great example of where data was already readily available. It just couldn't be fully harnessed based on the legacy data platforms and AI tools that either existed and, and weren't modern or did not exist and needed to be introduced. So this is, again, a great example of leveraging existing data, but harnessing it in a way that wasn't possible before and identifying insights that were uh, too unique to be identified by, we could call it the, the human eye or other means. We can move to the next slide, please. So this one's another example of asset management, but in this case, we're talking about a, a much more physical asset. This is a US-based furniture manufacturing company, and one of their key raw materials is a what's called a, a polymeric bun, or a poly bun for short, and that bun is essentially the foam that you'd find in just about any furniture where you sit down, you'll feel that the cushion in the furniture, whether it's uh, a couch, uh, sometimes you can find them in, in automobiles as well. But uh, these buns are delivered to the customer in a condensed form. 
and then they are opened and they over about a 24 hour period expand into their full size and have to be measured and then cut to shape for each order their end customer order and the challenge with this process up to date has been it's been an entirely manual process resources use tape measures and other rather rudimentary means to measure these buns and in the end they wound up with a couple different challenges sometimes the the buns would be larger than ordered and there'd be a, a billing issue that would need to be addressed in many more cases they were smaller than ordered or sections were damaged that needed to be removed and further shrunk the overall usable size of this raw material and again this material went into about 80 percent of their products so it was relevant day in and day out uh, not only the time it took to prep this material, uh, but the, imp the impact in production when there wasn't enough material. So what we did was not only introduce a new data source into their environment, but capture it in a digitized way. And if you look at that image in the middle there uh, that, that's hanging, that is a dimensioning system that is typically used to measure boxes, but we introduced uh, for the first time ever to measure an object like these buns. And ultimately what we were able to do is take a 30 minute to an hour process that would typically be required to measure out these buns. And uh, because of their size, they were um, in many cases close to the size of an, an automobile once they expanded. To be able to streamline that to be done in seconds not only again much more rapidly but extremely accurate to well below uh, an inch which was well within their requirements using this dimensioning system that data went into an edge piece of software which you can see the image on the side there and then that data was streamed into the erp environment and not only did that again digitize the process make it more accurate and that's where you're seeing that 32 percent increase in yield by addressing defects and delays, which had a $500,000 impact per plant. But just as important, especially when you start looking at the numbers, is the reduction in, in cost around uh, the, the billing challenges and waste related to billing, uh, which had a $350,000 impact per plant. And that had to do with the number of cases where the end result raw material delivered to them was undersized that information automatically went into the ERP system and was able to be reconcile, reconciled, excuse me, in the billing address. So um, in addition to all of those benefits, uh, we, we didn't talk too much here yet about the visualization piece of this, but they were again able to visualize this in a way that was not modernized in the past and gave them lots of benefits around reporting and, and other mechanisms uh, to increase value to the organization. Next slide, please. So now we'll move on to a different use case around track and trace. And uh, for many of us, I'm sure track and trace is a rather familiar term. On the IT side, we might call it location services. Uh, but really what we're talking about here is movable, non-fixed assets that could be inventory, raw materials, uh, production tools and assets, that are mobile and can have an impact on the production process and efficiency and even waste and loss when they're difficult to locate. And again, what's interesting about this technology is that it's not necessarily new from a technology standpoint, but there are things that are new with regard to how the technology is deployed and the value it provides that really changes the perspective of it today that might have been there several years ago or even just in the last one or two years. So we can dive right into an example use case to talk through the details here. We can go to the next slide, please. So this is a, another furniture manufacturing organization and they had a pretty unique challenge and that was to do with what I just mentioned there, which is locating raw, semi-finished, and finished materials. And the way that they did that is they had these carts, um, inventory carts, which they called dollies or tuggers, and they would move between 
the manufacturing processes on the floor and contain, again, a mix of raw, semi-finished and finished materials that needed to become part of any given piece of furniture that was manufactured. And the challenge was is that was managed very much in a manual manner up until um, modernizing and digitizing with Logical. So every time a team needed that, that would have to be brought by an employee over to the location or, or the area where the work was being completed. The next request would come in. So it would really be ping-ponging between all these different locations in a very inefficient manner. And there were often times where no one knew where uh, these carts or tuggers were being left and they'd have to go and search them out. And there'd be even issues with how much inventory was in them and the like. So what we were able to do for the customer was implement a track and trace solution that tagged each of the carts based on the inventory that was in them and would allow us to inform immediately where they were. They could easily look at a visual representation of the warehouse or plant floor and be able to identify exactly where the inventory was and how much inventory was in each cart so that they can address as needed. So when we look at the impact of this, it had a 21% impact in efficiency just by the time saved in knowing where the inventory was and how much inventory was there and available. And that had an impact of $173,000 in savings per plant per year. And because of that implementation of the location services, they were also able to look at efficiencies in other areas where they were able to leverage that wireless technology. So this was really a, a first step for them in one track and trace application that had future benefits that they would leverage as well. Next slide, please. And one final area here around machine vision or visual inspection or computer vision, all uh, relatively consistent terms, is when we look at IoT, we typically think of a sensor or a thing monitoring or managing something uh, that's very tangible, vibration, heat, uh, movement, all of those different factors. And, and those can be intrusive depending on the type of device that we're talking about, especially when we talk about um, measuring something complex like defects in a wiring harness or an assembly, a discrete uh, assembly process that has many intricate parts or even something like liquid um, or flow speed where measuring those with a sensor that is integrated into it, meaning we're drilling a hole in a pipe or something like that, can be very intrusive. Those things can be uh, challenging to maintain from uh, tuning and calibration standpoint and wear over time because of heat and, and corrosion and the like. So there's many applications where using traditional means uh, would not be sufficient, simply weighing something or uh, vibration or, or measurement. And that's where machine vision is, is very relevant. And again, what's interesting about machine vision for, for any of us that are familiar is that it's not new. There's been machine vision applications for all kinds of discrete process manufacturing and, and other areas as well. Uh, for some time, but what is different is the impact we can have by utilizing those technologies. So what we're talking about is either taking a, a legacy machine vision solution and applying more intelligence to it, or just introducing an entirely new machine vision or computer vision type of application that has more smarts in it, more capabilities to do things like AI uh, to detect defects in a much more granular level to do that faster in ways we couldn't before. So we're talking about opening up a wide range of new use cases for machine vision that weren't possible before. And I'll just give a, a couple of real quick examples. We have an automotive manufacturing customer today that is manufacturing transmission components, very, very uh, complex and very finely measured components inside 
engine transmissions, transfer cases, and the like, uh, where machine vision is able to very, very accurately measure and identify defects, not just in things like the overall shape of the object and dimensions, uh, but also have some visibility to the, the makeup, uh, the, the material and chemical makeup as well. Uh, we have a, a manufacturing customer that is working with uh, home appliances, and we're able to use machine vision to look at probably the most complex part of some of these uh, consumer appliances are wiring harnesses, not entirely unlike a wiring harness inside a vehicle. Uh, the, as that comes across the manufacturing process, those can be scanned very rapidly to make sure wiring is attached a certain way and positioned properly and the like. So there are a wide range of applications uh, for this. And again, the difference from how it's done in the past is one, the speed uh, because of advances in technology, the, the speed that this can be done at is anywhere from 10X to 100X greater than it was in the past, which is very substantial, and the type of applications and how we can um, utilize AI against the, the data. And, and AI and machine learning and those things, again, they're, they're not really new either in and of themselves, but the way we can streamline implementing them using tools that are either partially built or fully built to enable that means we can do it faster, we can do it more cost-effectively, and it opens up new areas that previously were just not cost effective to accomplish this. So again, this, this is one of those three uh, very substantial areas where we're seeing great impact to our customers. And again, uh, their, their experience to their end customer, reducing cost, increasing operational efficiencies, as well as uh, expanding existing or opening up new revenue streams and models. Next slide, please. So one thing just to transition a little bit away from the use cases to talk about for a moment here is how Logic House engages with our customers uh, and jointly in, in, engages with uh, Logic House and IFS customers. And we feel that this is a really important approach because Michael mentioned before, um, we're not looking at technology just for the sake of technology. We're not looking at IoT just for the sake of IoT or the buzzword. We're really looking to, as the example shown before, uh, solve customer problems that impact their strategic goals, that impact challenges that they're facing in reducing costs, whatever those might be. Uh, every And there, there are certainly many more examples we can give, we just didn't have time for, where they all have a financial impact uh, or a defined impact to the organization that was agreed upon early in the process. And that's where, that first phase comes in, which we call the uh, the introduction and proof of value, is identifying what value can be had uh, from from IoT and starting to identify what those are and the value that that Logic House and, and IFS can bring to the equation. The next step after that introduction is a workshop, and this is something that we make an investment in uh, our partnership with IFS and our joint customers at no charge where we really take what might be no use cases to start, we don't know where to start, or there could be in some cases, we've had customers that have 10, 12 great ideas, the question is where do we start? And help go through a very methodical approach to identify how it is we get started. And then from there, the next step you'll see is a production pilot. One term you won't see us use is the term proof of concept. And the reason we don't use that term is the challenge with proof of concepts are that uh, they typically are done at a small scale with equipment that doesn't meet the needs of real-time production use. And it all it does is prove out the technology, which is fine, but it doesn't prove out the viability of implementing this in the real world in extreme environments where temperature, humidity, vibration, uh, and all those things are, are much different than they might be in at, at a workstation or in a, in a clean room. So when we move to production pilot, we are using uh, the same spec, the same hardware, the same components that we would if we were looking at a full production implementation. And, and that not only saves time, but it saves money. It prevents our customers from having to invest, then reinvest after a POC. 
So moving from phase three of that production pilot smaller scale moves would be to move to phase four, which is a full scale production model. And then from there, we move to the next use case when appropriate. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of what the process looks like. We can go to the next slide, please. And I'm going to uh, hand it off back here to Sandy in a moment, but we just wanted to give you an idea of how quickly we can move between these phases. And this gives you an example from real world customer engagements that we've had uh, that within anywhere from 90 to 120 days, you can go from an initial discussion with IFS and Logicalis uh, to production with a relevant use case that's impactful to your organization. And there's certainly variations here based on customer demand um, and their unique environment, but this just gives you an idea of, of what this looks like and how it can break down and how quickly we can help customers get to uh, modernization, automation, um, or digitization of any specific aspect of their manufacturing uh, or automation processes. So with that, Sandy, I'll hand it back to you. Well, thank you. Um, and, and if you move on to the next slide with a little deeper look into, you know, we talk about introductory points of view and uh, what actually a, a workshop would look like. Um, we found these to be very valuable for us to come to you in, um, you know, bringing a broader audience from your company into um, what, what is possible and start out in that before the workshop to give you kind of a pre-shop survey. Um, and then we would be digging deeper into what are the best areas for um, IoT and where maybe you can achieve and receive the most savings from it. So um, after we would go through that, we'd be able to show the applicability to your business and then um, really review after a workshop where the um, challenges and ob objectives and where you could get the most benefit from uh, you know such a such a event and typically these have been face to face so uh, we also could be working and doing these virtually as well um, next slide The idea of focusing in on those workshops um, with uh, specific messaging for whether it be monitoring for your process manufacturing, asset management controls. Um, you know, our partnership is uh, deep with IFS, and you know, we know that there's ways to in increase and improve your business so, along with monetizing that in a very quick um, time to value back to your company. So um, oftentimes a lot of people look at projects and think they're gonna take a very long time. That's not our approach. We um, really are all encompassing and quick to turn around maybe what recommendations might be or ways to improve um, you know, the, the way your operation is today. So I think with that, um, Bob, I don't know if there's any questions that have come up. Um, certainly, I know yeah, there, we have a few more minutes. Yep, there's a couple that have come up. So those of you, uh, to ask a question again, you just go back to that questions open or the little question, type in and hit send. Um, so a couple of them are related to the the workshop and how do you actually engage for these workshops. So. Um, Sandy, you want to comment on how they would actually get started on one of these workshops? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if it's an, an area that uh, would love to talk with you further on, uh, the best way would be to reach out to your IFS uh, client rep, who in turn will um, contact myself and the Logicalis team, and we would jointly uh, be able to arrange a time that's going to work best on your schedules. Um, as Bill mentioned earlier, we showed on the timeline, the workshop's not a huge investment. It's a no charge, um, you know, engagement to, uh, to talk and generally they're, uh, you know, uh, two to four hours in terms of time. 
Yeah, and and I put on the screen there, you know, I know some of you are, you know, maybe not even aware who your IFS account manager is. So just contact myself, Bob Corrigan, and, you know, and Sandy directly um, at those email addresses. Uh, as I said, this will be recorded and you'll have access to it, but uh, we, you know, it's, it's free. <laughs> uh, and, you know, right now they can be delivered, you know, uh, remotely. Uh, particularly the uh, proof of value and then, you know, the actual uh, workshop to get one of your projects, you know, off the ground and started. Uh, there was another question here. There was some discussion about Azure and the Azure IoT Hub. Is this a requirement to use any of these solutions? I don't know who wants to bring that up, Bill or yeah, Michael. This is Bill. Yeah, this is Bill. I can certainly take that. And um, Azure is not required. If you're already an Azure customer today, we can most certainly leverage that. In that particular example that we gave, the, the customer was already using Azure and they preferred to deploy the data management and analytics software there. Uh, but that can be on-premise, that can be in any cloud platform, um, that can be in the data center at the plant, lots of flexibility there. Okay, um, another question here about, you know, how is the actual system integration determined uh, between IFS or what if they're using other applications they want to get this information into? So. Sure, I, I can take that one as well. So um, the integration with IFS is something that we have extensive experience with. So um, that is something that we can uh, easily do regardless of what the specific requirement is. If we're looking to integrate into other applications um, outside of IFS, that's certainly possible as well. The Logic House team has an extensive group of developers, both um, uh, front-end developers and back-end developers that can assist with integrating with uh, a wide range of applications to date. We've integrated with about 30 different major applications, so chances are it's something we've done already, at least to some degree. Um, but even if it is something new, uh, that's something we can certainly do for you. Okay. Um, again, you can type in any questions that you have in the little questions bar. Um, I've got another one here that's, uh, have you seen any uh, new projects that are um, being driven by some of the new regulations that might be coming into place for COVID? Yeah, that, that, uh, yeah I, I can start that off. That's a really good question. One of them uh, is around uh, elevated body temperature detection. Uh, it's something that we're probably all seeing across the board over the last couple weeks, here in the US at least. Our global teams um, have been seeing this for more than two months, uh, but one of the challenges is with uh, opening up some of the restrictions state by state, and allowing people to come back into work, uh, what um, protective measures can be taken for the organization, for the employee, for their peers. And one of the best ways we can do that today is with uh, elevated body temperature detection. And there are uh, lots of different mechanisms to do that, some low cost ones, some very robust ones. Um, Logic House is working with about uh, seven different major uh, solutions out there uh, that's really a big one, and again, that data and from that in, uh, from that tool or that technology can be integrated with other things. Uh, but that's a big one. We we have a customer just as a quick example that's saying we're scanning um, people's foreheads with digital thermometers coming into the building, and if I have 100 people per shift to do that, how am I going to do that in, at a reasonable volume and uh, unintrusive and and the like? So. Um, again, thermal detection or elevated body temperature detection is a big one, and you can reach out to the team here for more information. Michael and, and Sandy, anything else um, that we'd want to touch on there? I think you hit it, uh, Bill. Thank you for uh, for sharing that. Sure. And I actually forgot one other one, other one and that is um, we could use the term social distancing, but we do have customers asking us about how do I ensure my employees on the plant floor, on the shop floor, are keeping a safe distance. Uh, and there are solutions out there. And I will say for both of these, it's, it's unfortunate that we need to be talking about these, but it is the reality. Um, if people are keeping six foot or more distance from each other, uh, there are solutions that will monitor that. So 
Again, there's lots of considerations around privacy with these things that we can help you address. Uh, but if that's something you're looking at as well, there are several different ways to accomplish that. Yep, and and of course, in IFS uh, health and safety, we have places to put all that information to the employee ID, so you could actually report and keep track of it in case the state and local governments, uh, you know, really need proof. So, uh, I don't see any other questions coming in. We're um, coming up on that, uh, you know, five minutes left here. So, if you have any other questions, just uh, type them in. Um, otherwise, as I said, these uh, webcasts, this one is uh, recorded, will be posted on the webcast channel probably yet this afternoon. Um, you can go to that channel at any time. It's available 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Um, the, it'll, the, this one will be just commingled in what we call the Apps 10 section because they're, they're actually in date um, order. So it would show in the date order you can load more and there's about 75 of them there. If you keep scrolling down, you'll find some that are specific to apps nine and some specific to apps eight. So uh, quite a bit, bit different. Um, if you have any topics you want to see, you know, send that email to myself. And again, you know, if you uh, have any kind of an interest um, related to, you know, trying to get one of these projects off the ground or just, you know, do that initial, you know, proof of value, um, you know, send an email to myself, Bob Corrigan or Sandy Direct. Uh, we work together all the time um, or both of us and we'll make sure that we get the engagement set up and get uh, started. And as we said, there's uh, no charge for uh, either the proof of value or the workshop. Okay, I don't see any other questions coming in. Anybody have any closing comments? Yeah, Bob, this is Sandy. I would just like to thank everyone uh, for the time and uh, attention that you've given us throughout the whole session. And uh, thanks to IFS for allowing us to um, bring this information of IoT and digital transformation to everyone. All right, so seeing nothing else, I'm going to go ahead and stop the uh, recording and then I'll leave it open if you have.